Sound like a fair trade to me. Me snakes. Uh, I done ran up a whole meal. I'm chopping with my pockets and shape. Uh, Got my side inside the same. If I run out of space, they put out of state. Top out of beans, a woman with no space. Is driving this silly, they can't say the race. I had a bean inside of the race. Besides the team, the curtain in the way. I had to sprint, I went to the end. I let some old friends can keep up the pace. Come to me, lamb, and put it on landing. Man, I sit in their face. They jet that I'm on, it's supposed to rafe. I'm dodging the rain and I'm dodging the hate. I don't need a pass, cause I'm out of school. You play and you gon' be another. My diamond gon' dance, they come in their hands, my dick in a hand, I better get eight. I spent 60 bands on one of my kisses, the paperwork in my coat, he said, well, I said, we the cops, yeah, we murder, him in this drive, yeah, I strip them around like I spy, this city is not that die, uh, panic the ride, uh, soon it will drop by, uh, perfectly ain't for the top, uh, watch she tie, uh, yeah, just look at these rocks, uh, little mama got top, it's weird as a mop, well, I creep in the spot, it's not not zombie on the way out. Got too many bots, she feelin' my brother, we swiggity swap Keep sending them dots, I'm gon' feed my cousin, I won't let him rot They sent me a d- 
so good, I got her back right, it's locked And she got shock jobs, but I never want the key to the heart, no She said my music, uh, and love it when I'm rapping with a guitar We really came from the A, right, she flowing, having plenty of bars Me gonna and weeds, that's three hit a snake Me gonna and weeds, that's three hit a snake We done made a few thousand no straight Got me a meal and fit my plate Teeth on plastic plate Just cause I listen, don't mean I debate uh, I don't got no time to be late I done missed a few meals, got some buried in the lake Constantly dodging the grave, the world is a cage, you can't eat eight. Gotta keep the family straight, we know who they take, it's not me a snake. I done ran over her meal, I'm chopping with my pocket to shut My best on the side to say, if I run out of space, they put out of state. Mike Wilmer. So taller, I keep dollars on my head. Been a real one, this my motto. Hit my problems, I ain't scared. I put powder on my collar, cause she proud of what I said. I'm a leader, I got on follow, and my footsteps like the fish. I shoot like a Montana, chop up bullets, make them shit. Uh, black on black, new found them in the backseat, sipping red. Uh, jump from Atlanta, got the hoe ready to like pig. Uh, condo like the pharmacy, I got codeine in my fridge. Oh, uh, I'm a wanna steam and stove, cooking crap like grits. Got this Struggling in a pit, and they live. I'm standing at the lows with this Hollywood bitch. Got a nine, then a snow, no can't wait to let it hit. Pull up with a stick, I pull up with a stick, I pull up with a pink tongue. With me, she's like, I put some diamonds on her toes. Let her hold on and I'm rich. You was used to pulling kick dogs, you can still call it a leak. Broken can be fixed, but the memes is spent the nick. How you pull that don't make sense. I made a whole nine off of inch. I had nine and nine. Scratch your heart to this Got some means and win it Solve them, not my neck Cause a quarter brick I've been getting it since the taller I keep dollars on my head Been a real one, this my motto Hell, my problems, I ain't scared I put powder on my collar Cause she proud of what I said I'm a leader, I got on follow And my footsteps like the fish I shoot like a Montana Chop up bullets, make them shit uh, Black on black, new found them In the backseat, sipping red uh, Jump from Atlanta Got the hoe ready to like pig Hit my friend, told her catch me, catch me. I'm a lick of skin, she's so precious, precious. Might not fuck again, she too missing, missing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming up shortly, you're going to be entertained by an amazing band from good old Cape Breton. The Baron McNeils will be coming up shortly to sing our national anthem. Also here in Cape Breton during the time, they will be playing St. Patrick's Day at the Member 2 Trading Convention Center on March the 17th. I got skeletons in my closets and they scared of me and shot. Miss Marcella's under the bed, screaming, rock me, kid. I put water on my head and she got CC. Couple ops play dead and they still got hit. I done been little mama's spine, but it still ain't my kid. Only reason I was my line is why she drank my spit. Okay, I've been getting it since the taller. I keep dollars on my head. Been a real one is my motto. Hell, my problems, I ain't scared. I put powder on my collar because she proud of what I said. I'm a leader, I got on follow and my footsteps like the bitch. I shoot like a Montana, chop up bullets, make them shit. Uh, black on black, new found them in the backseat, sipping red. Uh, jump from Atlanta with the hoe ready to like pig. Uh, condo like the pharmacy. <laughs> U Sports on CBC, uh, les championnats U Sports, brought to you in part by, vous êtes présenté par Nike Team, Just Do It, Fettler, Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports championship rings, le fournisseur exclusif des bagues de championnats U Sports, Fox 40, celebrating a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport depuis 10 ans. By Veraburn, proud medical supplier to University Sports since 1979. Pierre, partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. The Government of Canada. Le gouvernement du Canada. By Bell, proud presenting partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final 8. Pierre, partenaire de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023. And by Protocase, proud title partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final 8. Le partenaire en titre de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023.
final of the day. Whoever wins this one will get the fourth spot in Saturday semifinal matchups. It's the host team, the Cape Breton University Capers. You see them there in their home white and orange. They come in as the host in eighth seed against the top ranked and OUA champion, Carlton Ravens. There you get a look at the Ravens in their row, black and white. Of course, it'll be a partisan home crowd here at a jam-packed Sullivan Fieldhouse here on the Cape Breton University campus. Again, the winner will go to semifinal Saturday here in Sydney. The loser to tomorrow's consolation round. The winner will play the St. Mary's Huskies who there you see it on your screen who won our earlier matchup this evening with a win over the Calgary Dinos. A dandy game as have all three been today. On the other side, the Alberta Pandas and Queens Gales have moved on to a national semifinal. So this is the last piece of the puzzle, the Ravens and the Capers. If this game is anything like those first three that we saw today, problems would be very exciting. Capers crowd trying to get behind their team, get them fired up. Just about ready for the starting lineups here at Sullivan Fieldhouse and a special treat whether you're from around the corner or around the world watching on CBC Sports. The national anthem will be performed by Cape Breton's own Sydney Mines own specifically the Bear McNeils. So that'll get us ready for this one after the starting lineups for both clubs. The Capers come in against the host team, 9-11 in the regular season. Lost in the AUS quarterfinals versus the UPEI Panthers. The Carlton Ravens with an upset win in the OUA final, eliminating the Queens Gales, who won earlier today, who came in at the third seed. And now we'll join in with our public address announcer and our starting lineups. Good sportsmanship by athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request that your cooperation by supporting the athletes and referees in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, sexist, homophobic, and discriminatory language or other intimidating actions directed at referees, athletes, coaches, fans, or club representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from the site of competition. Cape Breton University would like to honor and acknowledge that we are located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. We are all treaty people. This quarterfinal game features the Carlton Ravens and your Cape Breton University Capers. Joining me to help us celebrate this matchup between the Ravens and the CBU Capers are our basketball Cape Breton honorary game captains, Johanna and Pearl Jane. The legacy but left by this tournament will help pave the way for future basketball stars like Johanna and Pearl Jane to grow and thrive through sport. Thank you, Johanna and Pearl Jane, for being here to help introduce the national basketball community to our home on Cape Breton Island. And now time to meet the starting lineup for the visiting Ravens. A third year guard from Oakville, Ontario, number four, Callie Pockernet. A third year guard from Gatineau, Quebec, number seven, Dorcas Muiza. A fifth year forward from Merrickville, Ontario, number 10, Emma Kisakam. A first year guard from Brassard, Quebec, 
number 11, Kiana Poulin. And a first year guard from Ancaster, Ontario, number 22, Jacqueline Urban. Head coach of the Ravens is Danny Sinclair. Now it's time to meet the starting lineup of the Cape Breton University Capers. From Rotterdam, Netherlands, a second year guard, number three, Shermansa Villapara. A second year guard from Bedford, Nova Scotia, number nine, Hannah. Smith. A third year forward from Marion Bridge, Nova Scotia. Number 13, Haley McLeod. A second year forward from Toronto, Ontario. Number 19, Kiara Letlow. And a fifth year guard from Glace Bay, Nova Scotia, number 11, Mackenzie Ryan. Head coach of the Capers is Fabian Mackenzie. Today's officials are Kelsey K Kisilevich and Joanna Wiegers, as well as Marla Van Gelder. At this point in time, we would ask that you please rise if you're able, remove your hats, and join us for the national anthem being performed by the Barra McNeils in English, French, Gaelic, and Mi'kmaq. Capers. Wow, if that doesn't get you going, folks, nothing will. The Bear McNeil's K Breton Zone with a stirring rendition of Old Canada. We're about ready to go here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. The crowd's into it already. Carlton in their black and white. The hometown Capers in their white and orange. And Alex is going to take us away here for the start of the first quarter. Yeah, we got the local. Taking the jump for the Capers here, Haley McLeod. She's gonna have to have a big game as are all of the Capers as they're up against the number one team in the country here, the Carlton Ravens. And the tip is won and controlled. Handed one. off for Van Lepara. She feeds McLeod, step through. Can't get it to go. Crowd already electric here, early stages in a packed house. Drive from Luisa. It's going to be offensive foul. 
Dorcas Police. Uh, it's hard to hear in here already. Her first foul on the offensive infraction. One of the subplots of this one, we have the last two national rookies of the year in this one, Kiara Letlow of the Capers, now a sophomore, and Jacqueline Urban as Termenza Van La Para opens the scoring. Pockernick now for the Ravens. That's up to Luisa. Luisa up under, no good. Rebound secured by Letlow. Letlow set a national record for rebounds per game this season at 16.6 per contest. And fifth in the country in scoring as well as Van Lepara called for the travel. Just a little over anxious there. Both teams again, as we said at the start of each of these. Nerves early on, you're playing for a chance at a national championship or at least to advance for that chance. Pockernick out to Buisa. Spin move, floater, gets the friendly roll. Great move there as she scored over a good defender in Mackenzie Ryan, the fifth year guard from another hometown or from here in neighboring Glace Bay, Cape Breton. And LaPera gets it over to Ryan. Thought about the deep three. She will pull one just off the mark. Rebound secured by Urban. Pockard is now coming the other way. Mackenzie She'll pull Ryan. quickly for three. Sorry, Alex. Mackenzie Ryan, I was just going to say, could be streaky for three, but but she gets cooking. She's as good as anyone. Here's Urban. Might have got away with a walk, I think, but she scoops it in over McLeod. And there's your National Rookie of the Year from Ancaster, Ontario. That's Van Lepar's game, aggressive to the hoop. And she draws another foul. And what her push to the hoop does is, of course, open things up not only for McLeod and Letlow underneath, but the three-point shooting of the likes of Ryan and Hannah Smith. And when we see Leandra Hersey off the bench, another deep threat for the Capers. Able to get the second free throw to go down. Pockernick crosses the timeline for the Ravens. Good hands there from Letlow, pokes it free. Letlow, such a great athlete, showed it there against a much smaller player with the strip. I think we're gonna get another travel call. We're talking about the top defensive team in the country in terms of points surrendered this season. I know Fabi McKenzie, there would be a battle in that way. Carlton doesn't give up much. Missed finger roll there from Pockernick. Capers get it up to Vela Para. Skip, corner, Smith. Up top, Ryan. Drives, gets it down low, but it's tipped out of bounds. You're saying no tip. Haven't gotten the ball first three minutes into the hands of Kiara Letlow yet offensively. And again, no doubt that's a key component of the Raven game plan is to take Letlow out of the equation as much as they can. Now Letlow averaged just over 20 points a game to go along with those 16.6 boards. 5-4. McLeod loses her balance. Not Good battle the there between McLeod and Urban. Fabian McKenzie wanted to push on Urban. We'll see if the rebound. Good battle for it and maybe a little tug there by Urban, but the cloud was off balance as well, so. Letting a little physicality here. They get it in for Buisa. And the reach in foul called against Ryan. Basket will not count. And that's one of the 
everyone, of course, always careful of fouls, but certainly Mackenzie Ryan won the keys in a lot of games this season in AUS competition, played the full 40 for Fabian McKenzie. Let low she, able to chase that one down, get it to Van Lepara. And she's getting all she can that matchup with Buisa. Smith loves the corner three, heavy on that attempt. And she has the speed advantage, I would say, on um, Ryan, and has been able to get by her a couple of times, but good help there by McLeod. Bakernick pulls again from long range, no good. Rebanded by Letlow. And Letlow, and times I've done stories with her, she takes so much pride, probably as much in her rebounding as she does in her scoring. Ryan for three. Nice board there by McLeod. Goes there, up and gets fouled. There's the athleticism of Haley McLeod. It's been a little bit up and down this season. Averaged about 10, just under 11 points a game and seven rebounds. But she's the type of athlete, as you saw just there, she almost jumped into the gym for that rebound. And if she can put together one of her top performances tonight, will certainly bowl well for the Capers now as she'll look to give them the lead here in the first five minutes. First uh, free throw won't go down. Another low scoring start. We've seen it in all four of the quarterfinals. 0 for 2 with the line for McLeod. But I think we're going to have violation. a so violation. So a turnover basically against the Ravens. See if the Capers could take advantage. McLeod a third chance. Still no misses. good. Maybe early jitters here for McLeod. I mean, the Capers, all of them in front of a home crowd, crowd but particularly the likes of Ryan and McLeod playing in front of a true hometown crowd where they grew up, where they played minor basketball. First coach to his or her bench. Dara Flurge and gonna check into the game. For McLeod, Danny Sinclair goes to her bench. And she'll bring in Serena Dubnak, number nine. Buisa. Capers are going to have to solve Buisa because she's been getting to the rim at will here early. Referee's telling Buisa let the ball go through. I believe there's a delay of game warning going against the Carlton bench. Van yeah. Lepara will control for the Capers. Over to Ryan. She finds Flurgeon. Skip to the corner. Smith. She drives right to the rim, and the left hand finish is good. Hannah Smith. No mostly for her three-point shooting, but late in the season became more aggressive, taking it to the hoop, and a great left-handed shot there to bring her team within one. Piece of camp, but it's taken away. Two-on-one opportunity, three-on-one. Nice pass, Flurgeon goes up and finishes. Capers regain the lead. Van Lepar only knows one speed, that's overdrive. And Flurgeon joined her for the finish to give the Capers a seven to six lead. Skip to the corner. It's Duvnak. Great hustle there by Flurgeon. Unable to chase it down with the Ravens ball with six seconds on the shot clock. See this nice take from Smith once more. And Flurgeon, and here's Smith. Flurgeon has really come into her home for, in the second half. And she's going to have to give some big minutes here tonight for Faye McKenzie, the head coach. The Raven inbound by Donato. You get it in for Buisa. Attacks, nice dump off pass. But there's a travel call before the pass. You're gonna Say Buisa had a shuffle. Carlton Bench didn't see it. One thing I think they're going to have to with Buisa is make her show she can 
hit from the outside. She's electric taking it to the rim. We've seen it here in the opening six minutes. Vela Power controlling. Step back three. Can't get the roll. Rebound. Secured by Donato. If someone hits a three in here, I think the roof is going to come off the place. Not like that. Not that's the, not, that's not, not a, what the not Capers a Raven, wanted to see. Not Donato. But if you're a Caper faithful, but that's gets cheers from Carlton's faithful as they go up nine to seven. Kenzie Ryan, handoff in La Parra, can't finish. Gets her own rebound, rips it out. Hannah Smith, three to answer. That one's good. And there are shots for the Capers to win this one. Hannah Smith, if she gets open like that, you don't expect her to hit everyone, but she's gonna have to hit the lion's share as she gets her first there to make it 10 to eight. And actually, that's five points for Smith, half of the scoring. And the Capers are up one without any scoring yet from Letlow. No score from Letlow or Ryan, and the Capers have a lead here early. So if you told Fabian McKenzie that seven minutes in, McKenzie Ryan hadn't scored, nor Kiara Letlow, and you were up a point. I think he'd take it. Smith will take a break. Hersey. As there you see the three from Smith, and Hersey's going to be key as well because those shots that Smith was getting, Hersey's going to get those when she's out there. Step back. Nice follow away jumper there. Donato. Ryan gets to take it away. Poulin, the freshman with the strip from behind. Pokernik unable to hit on that three. Poulin once again, down low. Urban, little jump hook, doesn't go down, a little flat. Chavenza Van Lepara gets it to Kiara Letlow. Skip to Hersey. Flurgeon now, seven to shoot. Gets the rim, left hand, she draws the contact and draws the foul. Have to give credit here to Emma Keyes camp and the work she's doing on Letlow so far. And I know it's a collective effort, but she's leading the way as she'll get a rest. Dubnak back in. Actually, it's for Urban. Keys Camp will stay. That is two fouls going against Urban. So she's going to sit for a bit. Well, that's huge. Urban. U Sports Rookie of the Year. Clergeon able to hit the second to tie us up at 11 apiece. And we mentioned it more specifically to the Capers because of their depth about foul trouble, particularly for Ryan and Letlow. Something to watch, but it's Urban early. Donato couldn't get that one to go down. Ryan couldn't save it. But smartly what she did do there, Alex is when she did that Hail Mary to keep it in she didn't put it under her own hoop she sent it to mid court just in case smart that's the the head for the game ryan has yeah great awareness and actually i think this is the earliest in the game unless she's been in foul trouble that i've seen mackenzie ryan go to the bench this season and i think it's smart by fabian mckenzie you're tied up late in the first this is a chance to because you know as the game goes on you're going to get fewer and fewer opportunities for ryan to get a break yeah absolutely you got to take them when you can get them like you say tight game right now hannah smith just got a quick breather she's back in and the power goes baseline can't get it to fall offensive rebound flurgeon goes up no good look at how let low just surround it they Took find Letlow feed. down low. She's not missing that one. She's on the score sheet. There might be the, the match. 
the striking of the match there as Letlow gets her first points of the night. Keeps the camp. Mid-range won't go. Offensive rebound. Duvnack. Great work. Flurgeon now. And they're going to cut a foul here on Duvnick. Duvnack, pardon me. Both teams battling hard. And Duvnack come down on Flurgeon. Danny Sinclair wants an explanation. She's not happy with her bench about getting a substitution in. And more confusion here is finally Keys Camp. That's the second time. There's a little confusion on the substitution from the Carlton bench. Kinley Rice going to check into the game for the Ravens. Lurgeon. Great minutes off the bench already. Gets the first free throw to go. From Montreal. Can't hit in the back half. This caper team not only with a national, but a little bit of an international flavor. Representation from Norway. Of course, the, ne the Netherlands with Trementa Van Lepara. Get the little white pup here on the floor. 14-11 capers here late in the first. Another low scoring first quarter here on quarterfinal Thursday. Good position down low. But Duvnak can't finish. Good work there by Smith. Who didn't come down over the shooter, but the capers weren't able to retrieve the rebound. There's the miss. And there's the battle. Looked like it did go off Letlow. Duvnack controls. Gets it over to Pokernick. She doesn't mind shooting from long range. Can't hit on that attempt. No, both teams have taken their chances from downtown. Maybe the hometown rims will benefit the capers as well. But you can see Carlton doesn't give you anything for free. Capes can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Holding a three-point edge. And that's, yes, against Van Lepara. She dropped, once you, you drop that shoulder, get that head down steaming forward. Yeah, that's a mistake there attacking, giving Carlton still time in this quarter to attempt. She, she starts her drive from up there against a defense like Carlton. They're gonna they're not gonna let you have a cake walk to the rim. And the horn goes in, in the first quarter as the crowd gets into it again. The hometown capers lead the number one ranked Carlton Ravens 14-11. We'll take a little break here after the first quarter. You're watching the 2023. Proto KU Sports Women's Basketball Championship presented by Bella Lyant on CBC Sports.
MLW Analytics from Boost Innovation is proud to bring you the 2023 U Sports Basketball Final on CBC. This Canadian-built military-grade software provides guidance on eight performance mindset characteristics as well as knowledge of tactics and strategy in basketball. FLW Analytics proven technology is ready for its Canadian release. Learn more about the launch of FLW Analytics in Canada by visiting flwanalytics.com or scan the QR code on your screen. FLW Analytics, where champions go to improve their mindset. First quarter, a low scoring, 114 to 11 for the Capers. And as we mentioned, near the end of that quarter, if you're Fabian McKenzie, you're more than happy. You have two points from your all Canadian, first team all Canadian, Kiara Letlow. No points from your second team all star and veteran Mackenzie Ryan. Yet, yeah, you're up by three. And then conversely, if you're Danny Sinclair, you're only down three. In a, against a partisan crowd to say the least. So you've withstood the wave. And we'll see what happens here in the second. Great entry pass there from McLeod as she finishes. Letlow with the feed. And McLeod get off to a good start. And she could be an X factor here for the Capers. Letlow a little late with the help there as Pockernick's able to get to the rim. It's certainly Pockernick with a nose for the net along with Buisa. It's Van Lepara. It's over for Hersey. Kick back, Van Lepara, five to shoot. Turns the Jets on, gets it up, can't get it to go. Great move there, though, by Van Lepara. What a stutter step to get by Buisa. Buisa That's now attacking on her end. Tough matchup for Hersey. But it rimmed out for Buisa now. Van Lepara. It's still a nice extended break for Mackenzie Ryan, who's waiting to check back in. Like I said, I think that's the, definitely in the second half of the season, that's probably the longest time she's been off the floor. So again, that'll pay off, not only now, but in the second half. You get everyone involved off your bench. You get an early rest for Mackenzie Ryan. And now back to the old fence for Pockernick and the Ravens. Let's get for Luisa now in the corner. Goes up with the left hand and gets it to go. Again, it's gonna, I don't know if one on one, the matchup with Luisa is a tough one. It's easy to say, make her shoot from the outside, but she's so dynamic getting to the 10. Step back mid-range, Van Lepara goes through. Van Lepara, her parents are here for the tournament. Made the trip across the Atlantic. Piece of camp three, no good. Rebanded by Letlow. Ryan now coming the other way. This is the sort of pace you want with the Capers. Smith, back up top for Ryan, skips it over for Van Park. Attacks, tries to get to the corner for Smith, but it's intercepted. Again, a couple of times we saw it today with Haley McDonald of Acadia. Once you get in the air, no matter how good you are, it's a recipe for trouble. And that's what happened there, Van LaPara. Ryan for three! And the crowd goes wild here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. The hometown girl does good, and the Capers lead by six. Could not ask for a better start. We see the kick and the extra pass finding Ryan. And McKenzie Ryan, pardon me. I think the big sub distracted me. Um, Mackenzie Ryan is good a three-point shooter as anyone when she gets on a roll. So if she ever gets cooking from downtown, that'll bode well to say the least for the Capers as they have a six-point lead here. Danny Sinclair took the timeout after the 
Ryan free and a smart one, I think, because you don't want this crowd to really start cooking. So she takes a timeout, calms her team down, and no doubt a, a, the number one ranked team in the country is not going to be intimidated by any means. This, like you say, though, this caper crowd. It's an X factor, there's no doubt. The Orange Army usually travels very well, but everyone's got to come into the Sullivan Fieldhouse and play against this massive crowd all together. It uh, definitely impacts the game. I don't think Coach McKenzie could have drawn up a better start. Six point advantage, seven minutes to go here in the first half. Kokrenek, the kick. Three, no good there from Donato. Offensive rebound. Pull back, won't go for piece of camp. And you don't see Letlow beating on, a, on the boards. Good work there by Keys and Camp. Ryan wants another three. They're going to really say McLeod. Stays at a six point caper advantage. Pokernick now. Pokernick gets it back. Kick out Donato. The free throw line jumper won't go down. Rebound taken by Flurgeon. Donato's missed her last couple, but what a nice looking shooter. They both just cupped out on her. Certainly someone the Capers will have to keep an eye on, Letlow. Ryan attacking, left hand, gets it off glass and good. The biggest lead of the night for the Capers at eight. Again, Buisa. Donato misses. Big rebound again from Letlow. Letlow gobbling up the boards here. Only two points, but it's been a force on the glass. Not a big surprise to the leading rebounder in the country, and the kiss! Letlow makes it a 10-point caper lead. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Pokernick. Stops. Great move there. Gets herself open for the easy short range shot. Raven so talented at getting into the lane. The likes of Pockernick, Buisa, oh. Little lackadaisical there in that pass. Letlow wasn't expecting it. Pockernick rattles out. Nice board there from McLeod. McLeod's come to play tonight. She's off to a great start. From Marion Bridge, Kay Breton. It's let low at the top. Hands off from McLeod. Mid-range pull up, won't go. Rebound taken by Pockernick. Top shot for anyone there. McLeod couldn't get it. Carlton Buisa, her first jumper of the game. And I said, you have to make her hit from outside, and she canned it from the corner. All of a sudden, that 10-point lead is now five. Ryan tries to answer. One rims out. No one there on the offensive boards for the Capers. Corner Donato. This is a big 339 here in this game. Capers up five. See where we end up at halftime. Again, it's Buisa. We're going to have a timeout called by Fabian McKenzie wants to talk it over. Speaking of great women's sports, we're seeing it here tonight. And also, you'll catch it at the 2023 U Sports Women's Hockey Championships, which are taking place in Montreal, Quebec, March 16th and 19th. You can see all the action on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca.
Here's Ryan on that fabulous move. Drove through the contact with the left hand. Here it is from the sky cam. The kiss. And Ryan, the fifth year senior now an education student at Cape Breton University. You see the crowd getting into it here. Fabian McKenzie suddenly his team down. Quick 7-0 run there by Carlton and we wouldn't expect anything less. Carlton went down 10. But he knew that was just a bump in the road for them and they climb right back in it. They're the number one team in the country. OUA champions. Strong second quarter here from Buisa. Leading all scorers now up to 11. And I kept saying Buisa make her show you she can hit the three. Oh, and they're gonna say it goes over to Carlton. Oh, and there. I think she may have just, just pointed the wrong way. Point the wrong way, and the referee did acknowledge that. Just and quick to correct it. They get it in for Letlow. Fail power has to get over. Again, this is a big 330, I think, in this one. Take this momentum, whatever team, into the half. Flurgen! Great take by Flurgen. Wow, has she ever come into her own in the second half of the season, first year for Montreal. Boisa again, short range jumper good. Boisa so impressive. Third year guard from Gatineau, Quebec. Letlow gets it up top. Hands off for Ryan. Gets it over to Flurgeon, who wasn't really paying attention. Oh, great footwork, what a move. The oh, whole Flurgeon, the crowd, a collective groan there. Flurgeon did everything but score. But now they have to get back and lock it up on defense. Donato, with that fadeaway she likes. And they're gonna say that, yes, Flurgeon couldn't, she was tiptoeing through the tulips there. She couldn't keep, Inbounds. Here's that scoring play by Flurgeon. Look, darts and a straight line to the basket, which is great to see. Sometimes players take the overland route and end up getting themselves into trouble. Make that B line to the basket and then make someone foul you or score the basket. Looks like maybe some blood here for, I think for, Dorcas Buisa. Kind of a timeout called by the Ravens. Yeah, so I don't know initially is if it was because some sort of adjustment with Buisa. Again, the winner of this one will play in semifinal number two on Saturday night against the St. Mary's Huskies, the AUS champions. In our first semifinal on Saturday, it'll be the Queens Gales, along with the Alberta Pandas, and the three teams in our consolation round tomorrow. The first matchup of the day will be the Montreal City Dan, and they'll be up against the Acadia Axe Women. And then the second game, it'll be the Calgary Dinos against the loser of this one between the hometown Capers and the Ravens. I think everyone there was texting out, watch CBC Sports. You were not here at the game. And we'll be here all weekend to, to bring it to you if you're not lucky enough to make it here to Sullivan Fieldhouse. Donato, spin move, puts it up and good. Wow, Donato, I, well, I think not, I think, I know I haven't seen a better pair of guards than Donato and Buisa this season. Terbenza Van La Para with the answer. And talk about someone who can get to the rim. 
Maldonado. Checks out for Kuku. Good work there by Flurgeon on the baseline. As you can see, Urban's back in with the two fouls. Van Lapara, if you let her get to the hoop, she's gonna, she's not shy. And she doesn't mind the contact. 144 now. Urban tries to go up and under, blocked oh. by Letlow. The battle of the last two rookies of the year in the nation. That one goes to Letlow with the big block. Hawker knack back in for the Ravens. Her team down three. She'll control. Gets it over for Buisa. Oh, Buisa missed the bunny. But she shot so well. Including a three pointer. That one just rolled off. But again, she's getting to the hoop at will. And Ryan goes with the bomb. Oh, and Percy. A little un unlucky there for the Capers. And luckily, it looks like neither one of them that could have been seriously hurt on that one as they collided. And now the Ravens, who were down 25 to 15 on a 13-4 run, and now a chance to take the lead. We said inbound. Gets it in for Donato. Quickly to the rim, gets it up left hand, and they regain the lead. Well, Donato Luisa, and Puisa have been the the weapons for Danny Sinclair so far. The foul trouble for Urban. He hasn't played as much of the first half with two fouls. Flergen. Nice pass down low. I think we got a three second lane violation. Not sure what the caller, but just went at a, at a bounds off let low. It was certainly close to a Three second violation. That was a while that Lurga tried to make her move with Letlow camped out underneath. Seven second differential game clock to shot clock. Luisa gets in, blocked by Flurgeon. 3.8 to shoot for the Ravens. Great first half for Flurgeon off the bench. Giving great minutes to Fabian McKenzie here. Donato has to force one up. No good. So a chance for the last shot here. Capers. And if nothing else, no matter what happens in 6.2 seconds, if you're the Caper side, your first team all Canadian, fifth leading scorer, top rebounder in the country has two points. Not that she hasn't played well, she just has had the scoring opportunities, so I think you'll take it as Van La Parra. Almost hits from half. And would have counted. So the buzzer beater just misses. And we're at the half here in Sydney. We're gonna take a little pause. Your score after four, 20 minutes, pardon me, the Carlton Ravens 30, the Cape Breton University Capers 29. You're watching the 2023 Proto Case U Sports Women's Basketball Championship presented by Bell on CBC Sports. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. 
Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome to your home for the next two weeks. I think we can make this work. <laughs> Sick. This room's mine! Derek, something's wrong. Mom, it's done! They have cable internet. Everyone in the car. No! But once you're used to Bell Pure Fiber Internet, no! anything else is terrifying. Welcome back to the 2023 Proto Case U Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell here on CBC Sports. You're seeing some of the images from our opening half here at Sullivan Fieldhouse on the K. Breton University campus in Sydney. Our fourth quarter final of the game. The hometown capers, the host team trail by one against the U Sports 
number one ranked Carlton Ravens as you see the rookie of the year in the country with the basket there, Jacqueline Urban. And there's one of the stars of the show, Alex, so far. Yeah, she's been all over the place. Dorcas Buisa. Hannah Smith with the left hand. And another of the stars of the show has been Tremenza Van Lepara with a great dish there. The flurgeon of the capers. Plenty of action in this one. There's a three from Smith. Another Carlton shooter, Donato, who's been on fire, and the crowd's been into it here. And Ravens haven't really gotten much from their leading scorer in, pa in Pokernick. Just the six points on three of 10 shooting. And as you say that, conversely for the Capers, four points from the fifth leading scorer in the country in Kiara Letlow. But she's certainly been a monster in the boards, which is not a surprise. Led the nation with over 16 a game. And she's on pace for that eight rebounds in that first half. Good first half for Haley McLeod from Marion Bridge here in Cape Breton, one of the local products. Great athlete, had a little bit of a roller coaster season, finished with about 11.7 rebounds a game. As the dancers keep things rocking and rolling here in Sydney, we're gonna take a little pause as we get ready for the third quarter. Carlton 30, Cape Breton University 29. You're watching the 2023 Proto KSU Sports Women's Basketball Championship presented by Bell on CBC Sports. This season, catch the best in Atlantic University sport excitement at home or on the go with AUS TV. Soccer, rugby, football, volleyball, hockey, basketball, and more. Tune in at AUSTV.ca. All your favorite university teams showcasing their talents in one place. AUS TV, powered by Bell Alliant. They bring it to the court. They bring it to the field. They bring it to the ice. And now they bring it to you. Presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University sport. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team.
continues here at Sullivan Fieldhouse halftime in our fourth quarter final. Here's a look at some of the numbers in the opening half. The field goal percentage to the Capers. Both not too hot from free throw land and something we may not have noticed until we see it there on the screen. No foul shots for the Ravens. Rebounding even pretty much. Eight rebounds to lead the way by the nation's leading rebounder, Letlow. Turnovers have hurt Cape Breton 13 to six against the Ravens, who have the one point lead. Capers led by as many as 15 or 10 at 25 to 15. So Carlton finished that half on a 15 to four run. So both teams have had spurts. As we look at the Capers warm up here at a full house here in Sydney, our fourth quarter final. Whoever wins this one will play St. Mary's on Saturday, semifinal Saturday. The loser will be in the consolation round tomorrow against the Calgary Dinos. The 2023 U Sports Women's Hockey Championships will take place from March 16th to 19th in Montreal, Quebec. You can see all the action at cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. Alex, what do you see as keys for either side here as we head to the third quarter? Well, like you said, uh, for Coach McKenzie's team, he got six combined points from his All-Stars being let low and McKenzie Ryan. They, uh, they're going to have to step it up and really put their note on this game. The secondary scores did their part there in that first half to keep them in it, but the game is going to be won and lost by your superstars going down the stretch. And as much credit to the top defense in the nation in Carleton. It's not that Letlow and Ryan have played poorly, but nevertheless, for the Capers to win this one, they need their top two scores to be a big part of things here in the second half. For Carleton, it's been the Donato and Buisa show, as you said, not a lot of scoring from their top scorer on the season. Yeah, Callie Pokernick, three of 10 from the field for six points. And Jacqueline Urban, the nation's top rookie, she played limited minutes. So both teams haven't had uh, all their ingredients coming together, if you will. We'll see what unfolds here in the second half again. The last piece of the puzzle as far as our national semifinals go will be determined in the next 45 minutes or so. As from the skyward look of the Carlton Ravens hull, again they won the OUA championship beating Queens. Queens has been the number one ranked team in the nation, a 21 and one regular season. But Carlton upended them and Queens made it here, of course, as the OUA runner up, won their quarterfinal first thing this morning over the Citadel of Montreal. So they're in the semifinal again, as I mentioned, against the Alberta Pandas. And the winner of this one will play the AUS champion, St. Mary's Huskies. You're the Carlton side. You've had the success getting to the rim with Donato and Buisa. I guess if it ain't broke, as they say, why fix it? And until the Capers could show they could stop that tandem. Yeah. But it's all on the line here in the last 20 minutes. You talk about, and one thing that the Capers like were able to do in that half is get some rest. Especially, like I said, that's the most I've seen Ryan McKenzie Ryan on the bench in a long, long time. She's been the, the 40 minute woman for most of the season, going from wire to wire most nights. So we're about ready to go. The Ravens in their black, Capers in their white with familiar orange trim and we're underway here with Alex in the second half. Bachner controlling for the Ravens. Hands off for Urban. 
Luisa. Back to Pockernick. Nice spin move, right hand, won't drop. Rebound taken by Letlow. Pretty simple but effective basketball just off the weave. Pockernick got to the hoop. Just come up short. That makes her three for 11. And that battle there against Letlow and up against Keys Camp. And Keys Camp has done a great job defensively as the main defender against Letlow. Luisa attacking on Smith. Won't go. We ran tip ticking by Urban. Couple of offensive rebounds for the Ravens. Buisa blocked by Smith. Kenzie Ryan will control for the Capers. Gets it over for Van Lepara. Ryan tries to get it to Smith on the elbow, but it's tipped and taken. The pull up in transition, no good for Pockernick. Offensive rebound, up and in. Not only the turnover, but the Ravens beat the Capers down the floor. We're able to get the offensive rebound to extend to a three point lead. So, a couple early turnovers by the Capers here. Cloud unable to finish on that attack. Luisa thought about the three. Gets into the lane, kicking it to go off the glass. Fought for, rebound taken by Letlow. Good battle here by the Ravens on the offensive boards. They're making Letlow work hard to get those boards. And another, that's a couple of turnovers by Mackenzie Ryan. It's yeah, tough enough when you're being forced by a defender, but those unforced airs are really, they really come back to bite you. Yeah, you're playing the number one team in the country. You can't be making errors like that if you want to be competitive here. Got to tighten things up on that end for Mackenzie Ryan. Urban just can't get her rhythm. She's being played well by Haley McLeod. McLeod has the athleticism to stick with her and has a little bit of a size advantage as well. Ryan, the kick. Smith. Smith. She loves that corner three, couldn't get it to go down. That's definitely her bread and butter. She hit one in the opening half. Pockernick. Little flat there, Urban and Chermenza. Van Lapara with the jump. I think it'll go to the Capers. The Ravens had the first possession of the second half. Capers need a bucket here, try to get the crowd back into it. Yeah, it's spinning our wheels a little bit. The, only one basket here in the first almost three minutes. Letlow gets it on the elbow. Squares up, takes the elbow jumper and hits. And she's so great on the offensive boards, you forget that she can hit that shot, Letlow. And see if that loosens things up for her. Pockernick misses. And Letlow is up in the double digits. Yes, she had eight to half. She has at least four here in the early part of the third quarter. So she's gobbling the boards up. Step back three for Vela Parra, just short off the front rim. Buisa wants to run. Good defense there from Hannah Smith. A couple of blocks, Smith and then Letlow. Frustrating Buisa. But again, Buisa with a, a ticket to ride, if you will, to the basket. Pockernick still can't get it to go from long range. Carlton's come out cold in the third. Capers haven't been able to take advantage as they haven't lit up the scoreboard either. Van Lapara, Smith had to be ready and she travels. 
That's the one Smith has to be ready to take that three. I think I know she could take it to the hoop, but that kick out. Donato in. She's in for Buisa. Buisa is going to a little chance to recharge here. Donato hands off. Back with it. And that's going to go against Letlow. She put the hip check in the pocker neck. Just her first personal foul. Parker Nix had a tough evening shooting. Certainly been a presence. It hits her first three throw here to make it a two point Raven edge. Good on the pair. Papers get it into Letlow. She's a capable ball handler. She crosses the timeline for her CBU. Well, you often see when the capers this season have been humming and getting out in the break that Letlow leads it once she gets that dribble going downhill. Certainly not something you want to see every trip down the floor, but more, as you said, more than capable as the ball handler. Five to shoot for the capers. McLeod claims it, loses the handle. Another on the other way. Sorry, Alex, another unforced error, and there's Donato. It's a big trip here for the Capers, down five midway through the third. Need something here, too, to get a little bit of a lull in the crowd here to get them back on their feet. They get it in for Van Lepara. She attacks, gets to the rim, no whistle. Tipped and taken by Pockernick. The cloud has to get back a deep. Pockernick, a lovely pull up. Fabian McKenzie thought about it, I think the timeout, but it's gonna give his side another trip here. Kenzie Ryan trying to answer here for the Capers. They face their biggest deficit of the day. And again, we must remind you, this is the statistically the top defense in the nation. Smith had rimmed out. Battle for the board. Tangle up was Keys Camp and Letlow. I think a basket here, Fade McKenzie will want to talk it over. Off the miss, long rebound, Smith gets it. That could have been a dagger by Donato. And Lepara gets it over to Ryan. McKenzie's going to bring the spark of Flurgan off the bench here. Letlow rolls off. Looks like a bit of a frustration shot there for Letlow. We know she's a capable shooter, but she's really been denied entry down low. Tough little step back shot for her, a little outside her comfort zone. Urban's having a tough night after she got those two early fouls and had to go to the bench. She's been, hasn't been able to get her rhythm here. The, again, the top rookie in the nation. Percy and Flergen come back in for the capers. Mackenzie trying to Trying to withstand this wave by the Ravens. Van Lepara, look again. See that help at the back against Letlow. Nice take Flurg there by the hoop, she'll draw the foul. A, Flurg a late whistle, but the right whistle there. Flurgan having a whale of a game here for Fabian McKenzie off the bench. She's been a key. Good from the free throw line. That's a big one. They needed something to stop that little spurt. 
by the Ravens. Second free throw, no good. Flurg in good work there. No, that's going to be against Van Lapara. As she cut off, actually, a little discussion here on. I thought maybe that was a no doubter. Van Lapara on the block. The officials did defer a little bit. Maybe it's now over the shot clock. I think we're going to get a couple seconds put on the shot clock. We do a 20 on the clock for the Ravens. So they get it in for Donato. The three wow, for Poulin that's a big is good. Three. Poulin. Freshman guard from Broussard. It's a nine point. Raven advantage. And you notice it's going to go the other way against Letlow. Letlow and Van Lapara. And now what we're seeing a little bit of which does a bow wells uh, capers join amongst themselves a little bit. Finally, uh, get some order here as far as what's happening. A timeout by Fabian McKenzie. This is a big point in this one, down nine. And you've seen it more and more in this quarter, Alex. I think it's become more a half court station to station game, which I think is what Carlton wants. They want to get you in the half court and defend you. That doesn't let Letlow at all get out on the run yeah, gives, or get into it. It gives them the opportunity to bring that double, as we've said. She's always having pressure on both in front of her trying to catch it and on her back. We have the lower guard dropping down for the double. Uh, very hard to make that entry pass. And Ravens doing a great job in their rotations, uh, able to cut off shooters as they kick it out. And we know from seeing the capers all season, they've against in a u.s competition there have been times of trouble in the half court at the open floor fast break getting the likes of let low on the front end and finishing is really much of their bread and butter the half court is certainly more of a challenge for them in this and if carlton gets you in the half court puts the bike grip on you and we're seeing it here i think in the third quarter and then they've been able to Hit a couple of threes, and the Capers are getting a little frustrated with each other, so they have to regroup here before this one gets away from them down nine against the number one ranked team in the nation. Elbow jumper, no good. Flurgeon now coming the other way. It's Van Lepara. Flurgeon attacks, tries to get it down low for Letlow, but it's tipped out of bounds. The Capers ball with 3.4 on the shot clock. See the correction on the scoreboard as well. It's 40. 32 and 8 point. I thought it had increased to 41 32. Van Lepara to inbound. Let low. Has to get a shot up quick. And just a little lack of awareness there. Another turnover for the Capers. And that's probably just a ballpark for you. Probably a half dozen here in the third quarter. Couple early ones by Ryan and another by Van Lapara. So it's four or five, and that that translates in the points. That's the difference in this game. And there's Buisa back off the bench. It's double digits now. As we talked about before the half, a big two minutes. This is a big two for the Capers. Hersey can't get it to go down. Flurge and battling against Buisa. 
Wow, really Flerichen is... That's about her fourth time on the floor battling for a loose ball. Full marks to the Buisa for getting down there in the battle. Okay, for struggle here, just three points so far in the quarter. I'll never take the lid off the basket. You can kind of sense that as well, uh, Carlton smells blood in the water a little bit here, up 10 if they can have a strong finish here in the third. Buisa. Oh, nice there's Urban. There. Oh, but Urban can't get it to go. She rushed a bit. Beautiful offensive rebound, but couldn't get the put back. They feed let low. Kicks to the corner. Smith, three. Won't go. Offensive rebound let low. She goes up and gets two the hard way. And that's her first put back of the night. Second, one in the first half, that's her second. But that's where she makes a lot of hay on the offensive boards. Urban didn't get her on the box out and it's down to eight. Buisa juggles it. We have another jump ball call. This time it will go to the Capers. Wow, we've had a lot in this one. That shows the battle. It's been going on between these two teams. Urban back to the bench and she just can't get a roll in here in this one. Buisa back to the bench as well. Fayla Parra will control for the Capers. Sends it over for Smith. Back up top, Fayla Parra. Flurgeon. Drive. Puts it up left hand. No good. I thought Flurgeon had McLeod in the post there. Would have been a quick little kiss off the window, but Mr. Ravens can now hold for the final shot of the quarter. Psycho Sorry, Alex is going to say psychological as much as anything for the Capers if they can get a stop. But that big shot by Donato. And it's a 10 point deficit here. After three quarters, Carlton 44, K. Breton University 34. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You're watching the 2023 Proto K U Sports Women's Basketball Championship presented by Bell on CBC Sports. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team. Get your official U Sports Champions gear starting on Monday. Shop.usports.ca, that's where you can get it all. You see some of it there, a sample on your screen. So don't forget on Monday to go online, pick up that official U Sports Champions gear at shopusports.ca. 10 point lead here for the number one ranked Ravens. Heading to the fourth quarter. The hometown capers, they're gonna need a boost here from the hometown crowd if they wanna rally. Uh, again, against the top team in the nation. It was a one point deficit 
for the Capers at the half. Carlton won that third quarter, certainly. Too many turnovers for the Capers and good defensive work by the Ravens. Basket will not count because we have a breach and foul going against Flurgeon. Pockernick loses her footing. And we'll have a jump ball. Maybe Capers possession. So a chance here for the Capers to get off to a good start. Carve into that 10 point deficit. Yeah, you'd like to see them be aggressive here with Buisa on the bench. Also to start this quarter, Fabian McKenzie getting a rest for nice McKenzie move Ryan and Flurgeon. kept the basket for Dara Flurgeon. Good feed from Letlow and Flurgeon. Good move on Donato. And Flurgeon has been a nice great ointment board. for the Capers. McLeod! Capers injecting some energy into this crowd with the offensive effort on the glass. And that's where they've excelled in the last couple of seasons with the like, the athleticism of Letlow and McLeod on the boards. Sprinkle in Flurgeon. And this could cut at the five. That one won't drop. That would have been first 30 seconds cutting the lead in half would have been something. Corner three, no good from Poulin. Ryan back on the floor. Big trip here for the Capers. Carlton's not gonna give them anything easy, that's for sure. Melapara, big three, just short. Three man taken by Urban. Van Lepara doesn't seem to be squared up when she takes her three. It's a little bit at a little bit of an angle. Oh, good effort there by Keys Camp, but she can't get it down. That's that's tough to get an offensive board against Letlow and McLeod. But it goes back to the Capers. Down six. And you can tell this crowd was just ready to erupt. One big shot from the Capers. This place is going to go nuts. There's the fifth year All Star. What a career for Mackenzie Ryan. Of course, deep family ties to the Capers program. Her dad, now the athletic director at CBO, arguably the best male Caper of all time. He's definitely in the top three. John Ryan, who helped lead the Capers to two AUS championships in his playing days. McLeod gets it. She continues to attack, gets it up, can't get it to go. Rebound taken by Urban. I'll take that shot from McLeod, or being aggressive. Good pressure here. It's gonna be a turnover. They're going to ask for a deflection, but they're saying no, that Pockernick threw it away. So again, another chance for the Capers to cut at the floor. You, four, pardon me. You don't want to flitter away these opportunities. Crowd ready to burst here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. Ryan gets it back. Ryan hasn't scored in a while. Let low attacking. Let low aggressively. Comes up short. Urban with a big play. That was probably Let low's first look of the night off the bounce. Pockernick. And she'll draw the foul against Van Lapara. Another low scoring game here. 44-38, not a typical score you'll see here in the fourth quarter. 
Well, we've had an overtime game. That didn't produce. We haven't had anyone crack. I think one team cracked the 70 mark. Yeah, so it's been, we haven't had anyone in the 80s. Pockernick. Crowd trying to distract her, rolls off. And there's Letlow. Seven point Carlton lead. Fan Lapara. Gets it over from McLeod. There it is for Letlow. And she's fouled. So usually the help from the back side is there for Carl. And that's the first time they've been able to hit Letlow on the lob. Letlow gathering her thoughts now. Getting a breath there. Can't get the first free throw to drop. When you're trying to rally free throws, each one is magnified. Back to a six point. Carlton Edge with just over seven minutes remaining. Pockernick up top, Urban for three. Can't get it to go. Another jump ball. Wow, Flergen and, and uh, Boosa. Uh, well, they've. Uh, that's probably their second or third time they've tied it up. And they've been all over the place. Very involved for the squad. Kind of Timeout. Time Danny Sinclair wants to talk it over. As we'll wait for a play to resume, we'll remind you that the 2023 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship brought to you by McKesa will take place in Vancouver, BC on March 17th to the 19th. You can catch all the action on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. The 2023 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship also brought to you by McKesa will take place those same days, March 17th to the 19th. It'll be in Hamilton, Ontario, and you can catch all the action at cbcsports.ca and usports.ca. So anything's being said in the huddles here, we'll get your crystal ball out, Alex. If you're Carlton, you just gotta think, you wanna, you already have six point advantage, no need to uh, panic. Obviously, Capers being a little bit more aggressive here in the fourth quarter, trying to get the crowd behind them, but gonna do what's got you to be that number one seed in the country. And maybe you're hopeful of the Capers who found a, a couple of cracks in the defensive armor last couple of trips, a drive by that low, and then she took the feed underneath and got fouled. One thing I was concerned about with the Capers was Depth of fatigue, I don't think that's going to be a factor. They've gotten, especially for Mackenzie Ryan, they've gotten their players some breaks, and Mackenzie's done a all oh, great hoop there by Pockernick. Here it is. Again. Van Lapara played her well, but she slid her way in. A tough one against Van Lapara. And the one, so it's back to an eight point lead. So trading baskets is soon not gonna be an option if you're the caper faithful. Phil Lapara, now it's McLeod attacking. Goes up and finishes. Donato That's one of the most aggressive moves I've seen from McLeod all season. And she cuts at the six. And that's something made her make a splash in her freshman season. Tough fall away. He's camp won't go. Secured by Letlow. Another big trip here for both sides. Six point. 
Flurgan wants to get to the hole. Can't make the shot. Good help there by Urban. Donato is determined to take a charge. That's the second straight possession she went down. Luisa loses control of it. I don't know what happened. Flurgan come up gingerly. Looks like she might be able to run it out, although she's gone back down. Loose ball. I don't know what happened. She got up and was able to get down the floor, but then she went back down again. Might see it here. McLeod, there's, again, one of, that's what has made McLeod one of the top players in the AUS. Again, not sure what. Flurgan getting the right leg checked out. Looks like maybe the calf, a cramp. Big offensive trip here for the Ravens, up six. Midway through the fourth. A lot of dribble by Pockernick. Urban now, and she gets fouled on the floor by McLeod. Reset the shot clock to 14. 5.14 to go in the fourth and final quarter. Corner three, Pockernick. Continues to struggle from long range. It certainly benefited the Capers that Carlton, especially when they were up 10, had a couple of chances to really blow this one open, but they haven't been able to hit the shots, and that's all part of the game as well. It's Easy to say you get the looks, but you have to nail them. And the Capers still in this one under five remaining. That was ill advised pass there. Letlow was between, she was a Carlton sandwich there between three defenders. Pockernick. That, that's probably the first time in the game that the Capers really. Wow, Pockernick. She wants to take over this one. So I was saying that last play with Letlow, that's the first time that the Capers really forced it. As Ryan is stripped by Buisa. Back to double digits. Just like that, quick run by the Ravens. Capers had a couple of chances to get it to four or less. But Carlton withstood the charge. Van La Parra. Corner Donato. Skip Buisa. Pockernick down low. Keys camp. And easy step through, but you can't get it to go. Wow, Urban again. She had the old board, but just couldn't secure it. Eight point. Ryan looks big for a shot big by three. Ryan. It's off the front rim. Hawker not going to slow things down now for Carlton. Buisa. Back for Pockernick. Free throw line jumper. Urban is good. There's the top rookie in new sports with a big shot. Back to 10. Van Lepara. Directing traffic. Gets it up for Letlow. Four to shoot. To Ryan. She'll pull. Deep one. No good. Rebound secured by Donato. That's a tough one. Ryan had no choice there. But now time has become the enemy of the Capers. Carlton so smart here. That could have been a dagger from Donato. Got her own rebound against two Capers. Pockernick, she'll pull. No good. Rebound taken by Van Lepara. She approached the two-minute mark. Capers 
Got to get going quick. Nice spin move. Let low goes up. No good. Offensive rebound McLeod, and she's fouled. And we'll head to the line for two. But there's one of the few opportunities off a of miss that the Capers have been able to get in the open floor where Letlow's such a great finisher. She didn't finish that one, but again, it set up a, a rebound opportunity for McLeod. But again, those opportunities have been few and far between in this one for the Capers. And again, that's full marks to the Ravens. Have certainly shown why they're one of the top defensive teams in the nation. Cloud able to get the roll on the first. Second one won't go down. Bockernick, 148 to go here in the fourth quarter. That one's tipped at the backcourt. Luisa. Capers showing a 1 3 1 zone here. Nice block by Letlow. While well, they've, Ravens have had a half dozen opportunities to really put a, a bug script on this one, but they haven't been able to hit. Ryan attacking, scoop shot, won't fall. Mackenzie hasn't been, Ryan hasn't been a scoring threat here in the second half. Donato in the corner to Urban. Nice bounce pass down low as East Camp can't finish after she may have gotten away with the travel. Ravens are doing everything beautifully in the half court except scoring with the lead. Good crisp pass. He's spreading the floor, but Time. just not the finish. Time running out here for the Capers, trailing by 10, under a minute to play. Donato. Capers got to go quick. Need a three. And Ryan has been. She's so skilled at getting into the basket, but her defensive matchups have been making it tough for her throughout the night when you're going up against the likes of Buisa and then having to play. Someone of the offensive caliber, Buisa. McLeod. A great effort for her. Ryan, her fifth and final season. Her team. We'll move to the consolation round here. As Fabian McKenzie calls timeout, her team down eight. And I know Fabian McKenzie always has a few tricks up his sleeve, but I don't know if there's a this one a, that erases an eight point deficit in 17 seconds. This will be a very good trick. You might have Tracy McGrady hiding on the, on the bench back there. So, looking now like our semifinal Saturday will be start off with the Queens Gales and Alberta Pandas. The nightcap being the St. Mary's Huskies and these Carlton Ravens. And before we get there on Saturday, a couple of dandy consolation matchups as well. Tomorrow, the Montreal Citadin and the Acadia Axe Women and the hometown Capers, the host team, will go up against the Calgary Dinos. Just a great day of basketball, Alex. Yeah, four great all games. All four games, even like they all went down. This one maybe a little earlier was looking more and more like a Carlton win, but still in the last two minutes, each game wasn't determined. We have one go to overtime. It's just a, a great celebration of women's basketball here at CBU on the first day of the 2023 championship tournament. So we're just getting started. Again, consolation matchups tomorrow, semifinal Saturday. 
And then our consolation final bronze and gold medal games on Sunday here in Sydney. Give the Capers a lot of credit. They put up a great fight against the country's number one team. Capers getting in as the host. I don't think many people expected them to give the Ravens the run that they did today. It's something for them to be proud of and the hometown crowd. No doubt the hometown crowd will show that appreciation at the end of this one. Keys camp. Her key has been, no pun intended, uh, she's led the charge defensively against Letlow. I know it's a team effort for the Ravens, but she's been the one banging bodies the most with Kiara Letlow. And we're going to get a timeout called by Coach Fabian McKenzie. Coach McKenzie's not going to leave. No sense leaving anything in his pocket. Crazy yeah. things do happen. Try and get a quick three, maybe a five second violation, another quick three, another five second violation. Uh, you have to play until then. You use it as a. As these moments as teaching ones as well. Well, you're any coach of the quality of Fabian McKenzie. It's not only for who's on the floor and who's playing, but for the players on your bench and you learn lessons that you take into the next one. They get full marks to the number one team in the country. I don't think they would probably tell you they didn't have their A game, particularly shooting. But they, especially in the first half, Donato and yeah, Carlton really Buisa. struggled from beyond. Just two of twenty-one from deep. Yeah. Buisa, they didn't have an answer for Buisa. The Capers, she, whenever she wanted to get it to the rim, she was able to get there. And that helps set the tone for the Carlton offense. Not one caper in double digits today. Wow. Donato and her head coach Dees declares why up 10, foul a three point shooter with 12 seconds remaining. Hannah Smith with three. Danny Seclair shares a laugh with one of the officials here. Her team again, a great job. They knew they were going up against the hometown crowd. That was really cheering on their team as Urban will come back in here late. Hannah Smith, her second from Bedford. And bigger and better things ahead for her. She's Steadily developed. Big three point shooter. I think she brought the drive a little more into her game this season. Also, and some great improvements on the defensive end we've seen from Hannah Smith this year. And that was one of the things that, more than her offense, that kept her on the bench. Warden, maybe you would think, was her play defensively. And some credit to. And I'll bring up the caper defense. I know just because of conversations and interviews with Fabian McKenzie, they thought it was, he's been at the 12, 24 years, and he thought it was one of his worst defensively focused teams this season. So uh, give them full marks for their effort on that end here against the talented Carlton team. So the Capers will have to regroup for a matchup with Calgary. Carlton will get a day to prepare for the St. Mary's Huskies. So we have two top two teams in the OUA in the semifinals, Queens and Carlton, the AUS champs in St. Mary's, and the Canada West champions in the Alberta Pandas. 
So we have good conference representation. The old college jump there is Buisa and Smith get tangled up. And now Papers use their, I think that's their final timeout. Seven point game, 10 seconds remaining. I mean, it's still uh, a very unlikely comeback. It'd be a miracle on hardwood, not the miracle on ice. But again, you never know in sports. As soon as we said that's never happened, or we've never seen that before, it happens. Tell you one thing, I. I would dare say Danny Sinclair saying, if you breathe on a three-point shooter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're not gonna get not gonna get away with that one again. If yeah, uh, if you even breathe on someone taking a three. Look at the some of the big crowd that gathered here at CBU for this one. Smith may be looking to get it in quickly to the lob to Lud let low, pardon me. Mackenzie Ryan for three. Oh, almost a steal there is the impound pass. Let low, I think got a piece of it. That's a great shot there from Ryan, but the play just took a little too long to develop. Yeah. Too much time coming off the clock there. Yeah, you used about six seconds. Again, as we said, with the point one seconds in the last game, there's no way mathematically, if you will, that the Capers can, and they drive it up the floor and score before the Ravens could just let things. So a five point lead now. Soon the Ravens are gonna back off Ryan. And that's the final, the Carlton Ravens, the number one team in the nation. With a hard fought 56 to 51 victory as the hometown capers get a standing ovation from their faithful. As we'll hear the Nike players of the game, but again, another good matchup, Alex. We had, we went four for four today, and often in tournaments, you can't say there's usually one that's maybe over by half, or, you know, the, the outcome's in doubt yeah. early, or not early in the game, but maybe with a lot of the game remaining. But the four today, very high quality, very competitive, great to see. We're, we're definitely in store for a great semifinal Saturday, as you say. And even tomorrow's consolation round games will also be very highly competitive. Because teams want to finish, they still have a chance to finish their seasons with victories. May not be the bronze baby, but it's again, it's finishing your season on a winning note. We'll listen in on the night players of the game from the, the Capers and the Ravens. The game for the Capers is number 19, Kiara Letlow. Kiara Letlow, player of the game. I think she was even a little, thought that she didn't play well. But certainly, I'd say she'll look back and say she didn't have her A game, game. scoring-wise. But again, Ravens, you have to give Carlton eight, credit. Teresa Donato. Teresa Donato. Well-deserved, especially in the first half. Wow, she was sensational. And Donato. All right, the Capers will play so again, let low. 
for the Capers, Donato for the Ravens. Uh, there's a good photo of the player of the game with a couple of future Capers, maybe. Here's our bracket. The pieces of the puzzle have been placed. Our first semifinal Saturday matchup will be the number two ranked Alberta Pandas and the number three ranked Queens Gales. The seedings have held true. The four, first ranked Carlton Ravens will play the fourth ranked St. Mary's Huskies. So the top four teams have made it to semifinal Saturday here at the final eight at K. Breton University. So it's been a dandy day. Glad you could join us here. It's Cindy K. Breton on the K. Breton University campus. New sports on CBC. We'll see you tomorrow for the consolation round. You've you been watching by. the 2023 Proto K. Nike team, sports just do it. Women's basketball Fetler. championship Baron, presented by exclusive Bell. Exclusive supplier of U Sports championship sports. rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues de championnat U Sport. Fox 40 celebrating a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. U Sports on CBC, Les Championnats U Sports, brought to you in part by Vous êtes présenté par Nike Team, Just Do It, Fettler, Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues de championnat U Sport. Fox 40 celebrating a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Fier partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport depuis 10 ans. By Veraburn, proud medical supplier to university sports since 1979. Fier partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. The Government of Canada. Le Gouvernement du Canada. By Bell, proud presenting partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final Eight. Fier partenaire de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023. And by Protocase, proud title partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final Eight. Le partenaire en titre de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023.